Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Anshul Devakar, and today I have with me a very, very, very intelligent and a wonderful student of mine, Dr. P. Deepak. He is somebody who has uh, been associated with me for quite some time and uh, has achieved a great result in the NEAT SS, uh, both anesthesia stream as well as critical care. Uh, he got about 100 rank in anesthesia stream and 33 rank in uh, the neat critical care part. And he prepared for both. He achieved great result in both. And I'm very happy and proud to tell you that he has joined recently in the Department of Critical Care at KGMC Lucknow. And he is now a DM candidate. So I welcome Dr. P. Deepak, who has done his MD from Trivandrum Medical College. And he's here today to share his insights, his understanding, his preparation regarding uh, the NEAT SS exam, both for the anesthesia stream as well as for critical care, but more so for critical care, because that is what he's pursuing. And most of the time, we are pretty much very confused as to how to go about the critical care part, because the pattern keeps on changing and there is a lot of medicine element that comes in the exam. Uh, so that is what we are here to discuss. So I welcome you, Dr. Deepak. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good evening. Uh, so I'm, I'm Dr. P. Deepak. Uh, as you said, I completed my MD anesthesia from Trivandrum Medical College. I just completed in 2025 and I gave this year's NEET and now I'm doing my first year SRship uh, in DM Critical Care KGMC. Both, but yeah, heartiest congratulations. It's a proud moment. When you messaged me, I became so happy looking at your message. It was such a nice feeling. A very good result in both the uh, both the anesthesia part as well as the critical care part. So Deepak, just take me through the, your journey. How did you start and uh, where you did your MBBS, your MD and how was your three years of MD? And then how did you decide that you want to go ahead with uh, uh, super speciality and how did you go about it? So uh, if I start from the beginning, my I did my MBBS at Madurai Medical College in Tamil Nadu. So... The basic thing is that the medicine department there was excellent. So I was so attracted to medicine and I wanted to take up medicine for my post-graduation, but I had a rank of around 7,000 or something in the NEET PG. It was delayed by COVID and everything. So the reason, the primary reason I took anesthesia itself was to go into critical care. But like, it was not uh, like I didn't take anesthesia out of choice or anything. I was, uh, but once I got into anesthesia, I loved it. Uh, after a point, I was actually, after getting the ranks, I was actually confused whether to go into anesthesia or whether to go into critical care. But thinking about everything and thinking about how I landed up in anesthesia, finally I chose critical care. That is one thing. And also, uh, my consultant in my PG Institute, in Trivandrum Medical College, uh, my consultant in critical care was, he was such a devoted person. He had excellent results. Our ICU postings were very, very, very good. Uh, we had actually discharged a patient who was post-LSCS and had an ICU stay of around 120 days. And it was done during like one whole month of my posting. She was there. So all those things drew me to critical care. And that is how I came to choose it. Um, that's it, sir. That is wonderful. So uh, this highlights a very important point that you said, Deepak. And that is uh, any person who wants to do super speciality in anesthesia, the primary reason has to be the interest in that particular subject, like you said. And any student who messages me regarding the preparation, I always ask them this question first. Are you interested in what you want to do or there is something else? And most of the time, students are confused. They don't know what to do. They think that, okay, let's take up something that we are getting. And I feel that is not the right way of choosing a super speciality, especially in anesthesia, because more or less in practical life, it's just streamlining your work and you are becoming more narrower in your approach towards the patient. So you have to be very careful what part of uh, super speciality that you are going in. So that is something that you did very well. Uh, so tell us how did you approach uh, this preparation part because you knew from beginning that you wanted to do critical care. So when did you start and how did you approach the preparation and what are the things that you did uh, regarding this exam? So the uh... I hardly did anything like uh, the thing is that I had very little time after my boards. My MD course got completed on the 7th of March and the DM exams were on like knee tests were on in the end of March, like 20 days or something were there. 
Uh, but the thing is that uh, how I least used to read was one for anesthesia. Uh, I had taken the Sario course started during the end of our first year. So that was one thing that I used to do. As much as possible, I used to try to read the standard textbooks whenever it was available. Because we, in our institute, the thing was that every other day we had an academic session. And we had to prepare presentations. And for that, like uh, because such frequent classes came up, we had a lot of presentations to do. And during our critical care postings, we had a class every morning. So for those, I would try to, whenever my presentations came, I would try to read up on the, uh, from the standard books. That is one thing. The other thing is that apart from the books, whenever one case or something came, I tried to read one journal or something. And I think the best thing that I did is from the first year onwards, whichever journal or article I used to read, I used to store it in a folder in my phone. So I had made one folder for every system and I had some of the articles in them. And uh, because I had already learned from those articles, I had highlighted some points and everything. So it was easy for me during the exams, for my theory exams I'm saying. And that is all I did. That is all the preparation I did for my PG, ex uh, PG exams. That is the end uh, of MD exams. And after those exams are over, I don't think we can prepare per se for the NEET exams or anything because uh, while sitting for the NEET exams, I understood that it is not such a, like I did a lot of uh, pre MCQs from, from there are lots of MCQ books and online platforms, question banks and everything are there. But uh, in all of them, the standard of questions are very high. Very high. And the questions that were asked in NEET were much more basic and much more guideline oriented. Like they were asking what the next step is. A lot of questions were in, from emergency medicine and most of the emergency medicine questions were guideline oriented. So the patient came in this, you whether you should give like in a quite complex tacky, what will you give first, whether you try vagal maneuvers. So when do you go for uh, like a DC version, stuff like that. It is very guideline oriented and uh, lots of stuff we already saw during our PG preparation, like for NEAT PG itself, we had learned a lot of guidelines. It's almost the same thing. And the standard is not like so scary or so high that it is not attainable. It is very basic. It is like crisp questions with, uh, not much confusing answers, even for INISS. I, I had a rank of 29 in INISS in critical care group. Uh, the interview didn't go that well, but the theory part, like it was, when you think of INISS, you associate that with very tough questions, very long scenarios, long stem clinical stem questions, but it was not like that. One question was just one line. Like I remember one question, the question was patient in PAC2 on fentanyl drip, respiratory rate is like eight per minute, saturation is 76, next step. That's all that they, they are asking. No long stem things, no long history, no. Of course, there are medical questions, sir. They'll give you some, but those are very few in number. Basic physiology, guidelines, emergency management, ultrasound images, like pneumothorax images, stuff like that were more common. And I think that uh, giving the exam just after the theory exam that I gave made it a bit easier. So it was more of a overall uh, knowledge that you accumulated over two, three years of your residency that helped you more rather than any dedicated sort of preparation that is an MCQ book based or a, or some, uh, some platform based, right? And yes, sir. And having some sort is... of material with you that like mainly notes on the basic concepts and a few guidelines and revising them before the exam. That's what I did. And that's what worked out, I guess, sir. And uh, they don't really go too much into the details of the few questions were there. of critical care and all that few mostly questions it is were. whether you are introduced to the world of critical care and yes. most basic management that are algorithm based right yes sir the one problem i had to face for critical care was that we couldn't get any sort of previous year questions for need because it was not like the, the as you said the pattern keeps on changing so last year's exam was with the medicine group and uh this time we didn't know like whether we should study anesthesia or physiology or whatever would be coming. Actually, there was one uh, one question where they shown the ultrasound image for a uh, this thing interscaling block, and uh, the needle was placed near C five C six, and you they just had we just had to choose what was their procedure. And another was uh, they had shown the ultrasound image for a serratus anterior block, and they had placed one two three numbers in each plane. And they asked which plane to deposit the drug in, stuff like that. That is pure anesthesia. Pure anesthesia. So, uh, so we can't say that the medicine people will have an edge over us or something. Everything is there. It was more of emergency medicine guidelines, which we usually have to un like know for managing our patients in the OT itself. 
so it is it is doable that's what I, that that's what i can say and 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 also something uh, th that you have told very very importantly is that you don't really have to deep dive into harrison and you don't have to buy a medicine mcq books and go into all those medicine part which lot of students they feel they need to do for critical care but from last few exams whatever i have been getting is i am getting although they keep changing the pattern on the paper and they keep saying it is a medicine allied and now more medicine and no anesthesia they don't want to give undue advantage to anesthesia but eventually it is based on the level of an anesthetist only yes, because sir. most of the critical care specialists in india are coming from anesthesia stream so i feel ultimately they would want us to do uh, well in an exam which is meant for us so i feel that is why they just kind of keep it the level has to be like you said moderate easy to moderately easy level and also the questions from the medicine side sir like if we have at least in in my case i had icu postings for about three and a half to four months and plus night duties on cold basis and stuff like that so if a minimum of that sort of exposure we have to icu we will be able to answer the medicine side of questions but i'm pretty sure that none of the medicine people will be able to answer the the core anesthesia question so yeah, yeah so of course they would it. never no 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 that would be completely out of question these blocks and all anyway they might uh, answer something related to focus or lung ultrasound something like that but they might not be able to even identify the structures if they given a neck usg and they asked about a block or something like that so that is true that that is where we have that edge over other people right mm -hmm. so any specific book that you feel helped you the most during this uh, preparation as i said sir i like the physiology part i read from miller and stoltings only anesthesia books only and uh, algorithms as much as much as possible i tried to follow the acls algorithms everything i had uh, like uh, charts i had downloaded and made into your you one pdf was there no sir so i had saved it into my phone and that was what i used to keep ready also the previous algorithms because in these algorithms some sort of things that they had omitted like uh, the energy for defibrillation or the energy for cardioversion for each type of uh, arrhythmia and stuff like that that is not given but they were asked uh, what the energy would you choose that is actually given in detail in the previous algorithm so that is one thing sir uh, the other thing as much as possible you can do is that uh, whenever you read an article uh, you can keep them in your phone that is another thing and from most of my friends what i heard that most of them followed either washington manual or uh, oxford manual that is what either of them did i personally i followed these articles and whatever material that either you used to share or my consultant from critical care he had a group he would uh, share articles and stuff like that so that is what i followed and most importantly i think the basic physiology from some sort of standard book miller's physiology the first part of miller's is very good they also asked a lot about this basic monitoring cardiovascular arterial line arterial tracing stuff like that 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 also had a lot of weightage and again i think those things are also very well explained in miller or in other anesthesia books much better than in most of the other books that are going around so that is one thing as basically if we focus on uh, what we have and what we normally so are supposed to do then we kind of cover 70% of what is asked yes and, and there is still on the emergency medicine sir yeah so basically if anybody has been to an icu then yes. whatever is being done in icu is what is being asked that is that is what i understood from this and one another thing it is the, sir, the one thing that we completely miss from for anesthesia thing is poisoning poisoning mm -hmm. will be there and poisoning you have to spend some time to read uh, mm -hmm. i had read most of those things for the theory exam so like for our post fourth paper we will read op poisoning paracetamol that's uh, drug overdoses uh, opioids benzos everything so those things were also asked a lot but just because the the fact that i gave the exam exactly just after giving my fourth paper of theory so that was an advantage that helped you a lot yes so any any suggestions that you would want to give now that the next exam surprisingly is happening very fast uh, i never expected that they will give an exam date in november again your admissions are still going on like you you just joined yes. a few days back yes. so uh, the, you might have a junior in maybe less than 6 months so they are giving an they are having an exam in the first sunday of november and that is why a lot of queries are coming in so would you want to give them some advice as an apart from the general thing now in the last few months uh, uh, the biggest thing that you can do is brush up on the basics again and again and, and not go for the huge things sir. that is one thing and uh, study for the fourth paper as as well as you can because 
if you are from a government college, anyway, the DNB exams are over. And for people who are pursuing MD in most of the colleges, the valuation is not going to be on the level of DNB. It will be a little bit lenient. Yeah. So you can afford to, and anyway, you'll do the second and third papers very well. So it is about reading for the first paper and the fourth paper. And the first paper and the fourth paper will carry maximum weightage for critical care need as well. So learning those core concepts, those main things, and focusing on the basics. And uh, as I told, algorithms. So keeping, hopefully the next AHA 2025 doesn't come up before the need assess. And if it doesn't... Yeah, even, if it, even if it does come, I, I don't think something coming in mid-October, they will put a question in the first week of November. Because mid-October is when the ACC, AHA, they usually publish their guidelines. But yeah, I mean, they anyway don't do much changes. Any, they, they just put up new analysis. Uh, they change the level of evidence, but more or less the algorithms, they remain the same. Now they are very robust. But yeah, so the idea is to go for basics. That yes. is what you very rightly said, the paper one, the anatomy, the physiology, the basics of every system, monetary. I mean, and our equipments are everything ICU. other than the basic anesthesia equipments are everything related to monitoring, monitoring. Uh, advanced monitoring and like from something from a plethysmography to a advanced cardiovascular cardiac output monitoring, everything that will come up in our topic itself. And those things would be asked, but not like uh, huge derivations or anything. What it is or what is being done in a bioimpedance monitoring, what is what is being done, the basic thing, only such kinds of things are being used. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Deepak. That was actually very, very insightful. Uh, frankly, even I learned a lot uh, because uh, I have not given this exam in a long time. So even I uh, am little away from what happens. Usually, like you said, the PYQs are not available. Uh, yeah. Nobody bothers to go and... But, uh, there is one the thing, questions. sir. If at all, previous year questions from INISS is available, I think... Most of the questions were of the similar level. Uh, maybe a bit a bit of a difference would be there, but I think like if you do the, that is something that is available. So, like uh, yeah. if you really search in some Reddit forums and something, you can get a bit of like some previous year INISS questions. So if that is available, it will be around with the same around of the same difficulty level. That is one no, thing. But we... what you have said is absolutely like very very pertinent to what anybody has to do. And uh, MCQs now we can get from any source. That is not important. But idea is to know the topics that we have to read. So the gist is that they don't have to go and start reading Harrison. They don't no. have to solve core MCQ books from medicine. All they have to do is focus on the critical care emergency medicine part and focus on the basics of what an anesthetist does, the monitoring, the airway, the USG, and the yes. physiology. So yes. this pretty much sums up the entire preparation for uh, NEAT SS. For critical care. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So it was really nice talking to you, Deepak. Anything else you want to say? No, oh, uh, that is also the, the the basic thing is it is doable. I never thought it would be possible. So for anyone who's trying, it is very much a doable thing, both for anesthesia and critical care. Uh, so initially, you from what you said, there is, there is a change. I had a rank of 35 for anesthesia and 111 in critical care. And oh, the first paper was critical care. So I think if I had given the anesthesia paper first and then the critical care, maybe the time management would have been a bit different because now the thing is that they have made it into sections. So mm -hmm. we have one A, B and C sections and we can't switch the sessions. Go back, yes. Earlier, uh, earlier thing is that time management would have been a bit more easier because like here what happened is that the first session had basics. So I could, because they were all very short questions and very, very less to read or think. So I could finish that and have time remaining. And I had to wait for the next sessions. But the next two sessions, I had uh, like I was struggling to finish in time uh, mm -hmm. because I didn't know because I had been given like when I give my neat PG, it was one block section, so I was not used to that. And yeah, for the even now paper, they have done this in neat PG as well. Now even neat PG has four sections, yes, fifty yes. questions per section. I understood that only in the first paper, like yeah. during giving critical care. The next day when anesthesia came, like I knew that I had to go a bit faster in the initial questions of section B and C. So if it like that is something that everyone should have in the back of their minds. So they should always do this time based, even when they are doing yes. MCQs, they have to do time based. That would help them a lot. Right. Perfect. Yes. Thank you so much, Deepak. It was wonderful. And thank you so much for taking out this time. We know you have joined the department and now you must be very tired at the end of the day. 
so my best wishes with you and uh, yeah we'll be in touch if any of the students have any specific queries then i'll definitely get in touch with you and we'll help them yes, yes. thank you so much bye good night thank you so much